Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, let's get seated and let's get started. Okay, so t today um, we're going to be talking about how you can improve code analysis using machine learning and AI. Um, I, have, I have with me here Jazz, uh, engineering manager, and he will be taking the demo. I'll be taking more of like the problem space definition. I'm a product manager with AWS Machine Learning, and happy to have everyone here. Um, let's, let's get this going. Um, so we just had a launch, um, an announcement, Code Guru Security. So we're talking more about Code Guru Security today. And that's basically what the service that we have today for um, code analysis um, using machine learning and AI. So at Amazon, there's something we do differently. We start every product definition, product de um, building products or exploring problem spaces by taking feedback from customers, right? And um, you know, the question we hear customers ask all the time is how do vulnerabilities make, or make it to production? We're gonna go through you know, the full, um, how people get to stage even with tooling that they still have findings, critical findings in production, and then how you can effectively block this situation, which is what customers want to do when they come to us to discuss um, um, solutions we have from the ML space. So I'm from the machine learning team, same as Jazz, and being from that team gives us a, a different perspective on how you can at, a, approach security problems. So this is what we see with so many customers today. We have customers that integrate solutions in the code, when they're writing code. We have customers integrating a commit, at testing and building. But somehow, some way, customers still end up, when we run um, our integrations in, in, with Amazon Inspector in production, we still find vulnerabilities in, in production. We find log injection errors. We find um, SQL injection. We find all kinds of critical and high vulnerabilities that are actually um, things that you would expect that if you had tooling that was working properly, or you had the right mechanisms, you shouldn't find them in production. And every time we keep you know, diving deeper, and like we said, like we do at Amazon, most of our exploration starts with talking with the customers. We find a very um, interesting set of chain of events that leads to this kind of scenario. And it's kind of like a domino effect from, that starts with low precision. So what happens is, First, the customer starts with a situation where they have very good enforcement. So customers have where, um, situations where, setups where basically pipelines get blocked every time something that is high or critical is found during merge, during build, at any stage of the pipeline, they get it blocked. And then like most things um, in practice, reality sets in, and then they start to, you start to have this kind of back and forth between engineering and security. So what you see often is that, let me step this way so that you can see. What you see most times is that engineering teams and security teams always have this back and forth that happens when a false positive is found. So when you push something in production uh, or into a merge and, you, and the security team flags that, hey, this line of code is, is vulnerable. The next thing you see is um, engineering challenges, security, they get into a triage meeting and then they start to discuss back and forth. And if it turns out that that finding was actually a false positive, false positive what ends up happening is that you get to a stage where it happens the first time, it happens the second time, and then you get to the next stage where you start to have leniency, right? You make a compromise and you say, okay, you know what? Let's stop blocking the pipeline because of this issue. Let's instead alert the head of engineer or the lead engineer to sit down with the lead security engineer, but let's not stop. No team wants to be um, seen not to be agile. People want to push all the time. So this is how teams go from where they have all those things we saw set up in the beginning to a point where they end up having applications in vulnerable, in vulnerable applications in production. It's simply a domino effect caused by low precision. And this is why code group security, using machine learning, emphasizing, ha emphasizing having a high precision. High precision means that you have low false positive rates. So what we've done basically can be, how we, how we do our um, uh, static analysis can be exemplified with what you're seeing on the screen here. Now we're not gonna go deep into code analysis, but I'm gonna explain what's happening here. Right on the top right side, on the top right to me, maybe and left to you, what you have is a code block that has an um, MD5 um, method there. If you are in the very well security space, MD5 is known to be a very um, 
it's, it's, it's used, when, when it's used for cryptography, it causes collision issues. So if you use MD5 for, crypto, for actual encryption, you, you run the risk of having vulnerabilities in your code. But if you use it for number generation, you're good. So this is a real life example of the kind of thing that will make the engineering team and the security team to go with, to this back and forth. On the left side here, this method uses MD5, but it's not vulnerable because it's being used for string generation. On the right here, on line, on line um, 21, uh, sorry, on line 20, the method is called again, but it's used for encryption. So the difference between this and this is that the same method is used, but in both places, it's, 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 it, in one area, it's a vulnerability here, here it's not. And this is where the machine learning comes in. Machine learning allows you to look at the code and automated reasoning and say, even though you're using the same method, this is, not a, this is a false positive and this is a true positive. And what it does, it reduces the amount of time that you have this back and forth happening between security and engineering. So you don't have the case where the engineer pushes this code, it gets flagged, and then they go into a room with security. And after the discussion, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's really not an issue because you just use it for string generation. The, with, with advanced algorithms in machine learning and AI and, and automated reasoning, you can actually tell that you, you find this and you pass this one. And you find this one and you block this one, even though the same method was used. That's a big difference. And this is what makes it such that you don't get into that situation where you are, you're, you're, you now disallow your, your gating mechanisms because you don't want to block pipelines when issues aren't actually issues. So this is basically um, what the customers keep telling us, keep saying we keep having this problem of false positives. We spend a lot of valuable time investigating false positives. It's, it's customers are drowning in false positives. And we went back to the lab with this problem you know, to, to, to be pretty much build a solution that we think would help customers to save time, save, save security teams time on triaging. And with the solution we have, which we announced today, I'll let um, our engineering manager come and walk us through that solution. I'll have to welcome Jazz now to speak to us about um, the solution we have. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So today I'm uh, thrilled to announce that we launched in the morning during keynote a new product called Amazon Code Guru Security. This product, as uh, Ifine was uh, mentioning, is really focused towards having very, very low false positive rate, very high precision and very low false positive rate. So when we find something, you can trust to be able to block your pipelines, etc., with this tool. That's really our primary goal. The other aspect that we really focused on was how to make it easy for our customers to use and integrate in the various different tooling that they use. I mean, some people use Jenkins, somebody else uses GitHub, uh, somebody uses CSCD, Circle CI. I mean, you can just keep on naming the products. So by doing, by creating an API-based and cloud-based integration, we have made it super easy to integrate our product into any kind of pipeline or any kind of CSCD tool that you might have. The third thing, which is another aspect that we have built based on a lot of feedback from security engineers. The security engineers, when they are tracking bugs, a lot of times they are struggling to figure out when a bug is closed or when it's still open. And they'll open a ticket, then they'll ask the engineer, hey, is it closed, is it done, not done? And it just, that back and forth just wastes everybody's time. So we have built some unique technology for bug tracking which is able to figure out between, let's say, different revisions of code, whether a bug was actually fixed or not. Even if, and that's not a, as easy a problem as it might seem because the code moves. So in the first scan, we may find the code at line number 50. Second scan, the same code may have moved to a different method at line number 55. So we are able to match that and say, okay, the bug is still open versus it's closed. And that saves valuable amount of time for security engineers. In addition, as I was talking about, we are able to, with this API-based mechanism, integrate into various different places in the developer lifecycle. We have deep ID integrations where you can use Code Whisperer, which is our Gen AI tool, and that integrates uh, security scanning. That's one way to do it. Then we have Jupyter plugins for uh, scanning your notebooks. We also have uh, various integrations, some of which I'll show you in the, uh, in the demo that I'm going to talk about. Uh, for different uh, tool, tools like GitHub, CSCD, etc. In addition, we also have integration into Inspector. So in Inspector, whenever you push a Lambda, that is AWS Lambda, update to AWS Lambda, 
we scan that lambda for any production issues. So essentially, we'll take your lambdas, we'll extract out the code inside the lambda. So if it's Java, we'll decompile it. If it's Python or JavaScript, we'll extract the code out. We'll remove the open source libraries because we only want to scan the code that's under your control. And then we scan the rest of the code and we'll tell you about the issues in there. So that's also a new feature that went GA today. Our coverage right now is three languages, Java, Python, and JavaScript. And we are introducing a lot more languages coming up soon. We cover pretty much all the top uh, security issues, OS, OAS for CW Top 25, uh, and also industry. We support industry-specific hardcoded credentials. So let me switch to the demo. Uh, this one, right? Yep. 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 Perfect. So this product is launched in preview today. So you can go to AWS console, look for Code Guru Security, and use it today. So this is my test account, where I've already pre-scanned many pieces of code and integrated into CICD pipelines in, across uh, various pipelines. And you can see right here in the dashboard that you can see how many findings are currently open across uh, your various pipelines. So that this gives a very nice overview for, for security engineers to be able to see what's happening across different pipelines. In addition, you can see these graphs, which are what are built using our bug tracking technology. You can see how many issues are still open versus how many issues were closed. So you can see the trend of, for example, here, the trend of closed issues is such that recently 600 or 700 issues were closed, but 596 are still open. So that gives a very nice view of overall what's happening across your pipelines, whether engineers are actually closing things or are the issues being left open. And of course, you can track like average time to close. Are the engineers really, is the average time to close improving, not improving? Because if it's not improving, then there is a problem. If it's getting worse, maybe you have lots of issues that have been open for too long. So these graphs are, uh, these kind of dashboard gives a very nice overview for a security engineer, security execs to understand what's happening across different pipelines across your systems. Then these are the integrations we support today, like GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, Code Pipeline. And also, of course, we have a client application that you can integrate into your custom pipeline system if you have one like that, or any other pipeline system for that matter. Also, we support, uh, as I mentioned, IDE plugins uh, for Jupyter and uh, Visual Studio, IntelliJ, et cetera, where you can scan right in IDE. And that's very powerful because that really empowers the developers to check their code before it's ever pushed into the pipeline or committed anywhere. And I already mentioned our integration with Amazon Inspector. So this view kind of shows you different pipelines that we have integrated. And uh, as an example, let me switch to this one. Let's go to GitHub. So for example, this is a GitHub integration where multiple scans have been done. One scan was done on every revision. So whenever code was pushed to the main line, we automatically went and scanned that particular repository for issues. So that's an example of a GitHub integration that, uh, that we did. And there's another view for being able to see all the findings. And here also you can see how many you, you can filter by various aspects, like for example, the vulnerability or the name of the scan, and you can also filter by statuses, et cetera. So another exciting feature that we have is code fixes. So not only do we tell you there is an issue, we can also give you a patch. So you can just click here, for example, download a patch and apply the vulnerability patch right there. So that makes it very easy for developers to fix. They don't have to worry about hey, this is a security issue, and then go do a back and forth with security engineers to really figure out how to fix the issue. And that's one of the other things we kept on hearing from security engineers, that they're spending a lot of time working with, the, with their software engineers to explain to them how to fix it, what do they need to do to fix it. And that's, that takes up a lot of time. It uh, leaves vulnerabilities open many times. So this feature, uh, which we call code bug fix, 
is also based on machine learning and automated reasoning where we are able to tell you exactly how to fix that piece of code. And you can download the patch, apply the patch on the code, and essentially that's, it, it makes the job of developer very, very easy. Actually, let me talk a little bit more about this detector. So this detector is an XML entity detector. Essentially what's happening is sometimes when you are processing XML entities, if you're using URIs that essentially are getting documents outside of your own domains, you could potentially uh, insert some attacker's code inside your own XML document. And this bug fix uh, essentially stops that from happening by eliminating some doc, the use of doc type tags. Sorry. So in, you can also go down to a level of a single pipeline and also see what's happening at the single pipeline. So for example, I can easily see here, uh, I have 41 open findings on this pipeline. They have been mostly open for about two days and I can see how, what's the distribution of high, mediums, and lows. So that kind of view kind of helps me figure out what's happening with a specific pipeline. Also, uh, I can go and look at the top vulnerabilities for, for this particular pipeline. So that dive in, that dashboard, is, was really built by a lot of feedback from our security engineers and developers, uh, where they told us they want to understand, they want to dive deep, they want to figure out what's happening across their pipelines. All right, that's the end of my demo. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so thank you everyone for joining us here. And um, we hope that, um, sorry. So we're looking forward to, you know, we're in preview now and we really want customers to, you know, try this service and give us feedback. Um, we've done a lot of extensive testing. We train a lot of our models on internal code, Amazon code. So we believe, uh, I think we're out of time. We, 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 so we have a lot of training data that we use to train these models to achieve the low precision that we actually um, are able to deliver on this. It comes to a lot of iteration, machine learning models that detectors are trained all the time. And when we keep, uh, the thing about how ML changes this space is that, of course, it's not static, it's learnable, right? When we get feedback that a certain finding is a false positive, it goes back to our model, and we train it, and it gets better. And we keep benchmarking and going through that iterative loop of making the models better. You know, so if you want to try this, um, do I have? Oh, OK. It's, it's open now for preview, and it's free um, during the preview. So just go to this console, or just search CodeGuru on Google and you'll be able to try this out on your, um, your repositories. We want to get the feedback, and we will we'll be happy to work with anyone um, who wants to get closer with the team um, to work towards the public preview. Um, yeah. And that's it. Um, look forward to your feedback on the app. Please rate the, the talk on the app. And um, thank you. <laughs>